Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Terramap and in this video I would like to speak a little bit about my October um, mostly from of course tarot and card related perspective but also just um, mention a few things that I was you know kind of getting into. So I noticed in October I was I'm going through a lot of my old decks, you know, I have a lot, a big collection, as you know, um, and I keep using my decks, so I'm not this type of collector who just has decks on the shelves and, you know, is scared to use them. I use all of my decks, and um, when I don't use a deck, or when I feel like a deck is not interested, uh, interesting to me anymore, I usually sell them, give them, just move them on. So, in October, as I mentioned, I noticed I started revisiting a lot of my old decks. So, for example, I had, as you know, this beautiful exchange um, with uh, James Wenless uh, and his Voyager Tarot, his um, beautiful star um, lesson, you know, classes about the deck, uh, which you can get on his website. So I started kind of reworking and um, reawakening my interest, you know, in the decks that I already had. And because I haven't used them for a long time, they felt like, you know, this kind of the, another new deck. And um, so, yeah, this uh, Voyager Tarot deck is really amazing. It's a college deck. I know it's not everybody cup of everybody's cup of tea, but... It's a perfect, perfect deck, and I've done a lot of it, actually, in the past for creative writing. So I used to, you know, shuffle a deck, either before I went to sleep, and then I would pull a card and leave it, you know, on, like, next to my bed. And when I wake up, woke up, I used to just take the card, look at all the symbols, look at the image, and do in the morning before getting up creative writing with it and creative writing or intuitive writing really is about allowing the free flow of your thoughts to be captured by the pen and then the intuition intuitive associations you have with the image um, to be captured with a pen so if you look at the image and you sit in your bed and go i don't know what to write you write I don't know what to write. I'm sitting here and thinking what to write. And at some point, seriously, the flow of um, subconscious or unconscious opens up and you come up with some incredible insights. And tarot cards, oracle cards can help us with um, exploring these things. I have just watched Natalia's um Natalia's video on uh, reading for yourself objectively, objectively, and she mentions something um, about you know translating an image versus interpreting an image, um, in and both are you know valid ways to work with an image. You can interpret an image based on your personal associations and on your personal experiences. Um, like, for example, some will be really uh, afraid of the devil, some people might be afraid of goats, some people might have tried mushrooms, some people could have gotten sick by eating mushrooms. So you would put your personal opinion and your personal experience and your personal projection onto the image that would be interpreting the image. Uh, but translating the image would be really working with archetypal um, associations of symbols that the image contains and tarot oracle cards often are very great ways to um, work with an image like this i'm actually looking for natalia's channel so that you can oh there you go uh, her channel is called ouroboros and i highly highly encourage you to subscribe and check her videos Natalia is a friend. We have been, you know, chatting for um, years now together, and we've known each other um, as friends. And uh, I'm so glad she started the channel. She is a psychologist, and um, she brings together psychology and tarot in such a wonderful way uh, that I highly recommend you to check out her videos. So. Um, this deck perfect for either intuitive, very subjective reading of tarot and seeing what personally you uh, you know you are sparked by, but also uh, as um, a translating of the symbols that come up in in the cards uh, from a more maybe objective um, 
point of view that you can, you know, research and check um, in books or see what the image, how the image was evolving or how the symbol was evolving and stuff like this. So another deck that I, you know, revisited was this amazing, um, for me, amazing deck for shadow work, the Cecoli Tarot. Uh, Nicoletta Cecoli deck, you know, mass produced deck, very cheaply uh, affordable. Uh, again, not everybody cup of tea probably because it's a weird deck with all those crazy dolls, but it's really great for that kind of deep shadowy work. It's actually really punchy, very full on for me. I find it personally quite a challenging deck to work with, these images. And they're all kind of sulky, nobody's happy. Um, you know, it's a very, maybe sometimes even difficult work for shadow, a difficult deck for shadow work. Uh, you might want to go for something lighter, but I personally really, really love this deck. So again, was discovering, um, you know, the germs uh, hidden in this deck. Another one is this awesome for element tarot deck. Um, with it, which is really elemental, crazy in color, beautiful frames, cool artwork, very kind of earthy, shamanic um, artwork, uh, abstract, but also, you know, the um, major arcana have um, renamed often, uh, renamed archetypes, so there's the wheel, tower for tower, um, so we have fire, water, air, you know, the elements, and um, beautiful, let me just show you the, I love hermit, so this is the hierophant, also the priest, um, shaman for the hangman, and there's empress, and these are the bags, so all four elements, and yeah, it's, it's really sweet, you know, if you in the Winter time and there's no color and um, this will burst your creative juices for sure So I think it's called four elements uh, four elements tarot. I will check and link um, the name below because I can't really remember right now uh, another one that I found fascinating is the um, um, What is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm like blanking it out. But it's this deck, the, the creator of this deck, um, Matt Perry, is, uh, he, he passed on unfortunately. But um, it's an amazing, amazing deck. Very kind of hard to read because it's, as you can see, it's dreamy, it's not sharp. It has all those interiors um, as, you know, archetypes. Uh, all the like walls and rooms and uh, saloons or like you know parts of gardens and so it's quite hard to see quite hard to read you kind of have to go like you know you want to like have big images of it but it's a, such a amazing deck for like quiet you know really sitting and molding on the one image and figuring out how does it make you feel and what do you see what does it remind you of so this amazing deck i'm going to again link the name of it below in the description box because i forgot what it's called another one that i revisited and actually i keep using weavers a lot but this weaver ashes she reminds me of my great grandmother marcella and I love her. I think this is one of my favorites. There's, I have a few that I'm really close with. Um, and she's definitely one of the weavers that I feel personal, like very close personal connection with. So Ashes has been sitting with me for nearly the whole month and um, working with. I love, love playing with the Forest of Precious Tweaks. Um, that's the deck that arrived from Kickstarter. Um, and it is just an incredible oracle deck. I mix it with the Wistar Oracle, so, you know, I have two of them together now. They still fit into the box uh, from, you know, like barely, but they do, uh, of the box of the Forest of Precious Tweaks. And this is by Trisha Murray, by Precious Tweaks, amazing oracle deck, so healing and beautiful. Uh, and the month would not have gone by without me using Oracle of Initiation. I so love this deck. I am constantly uh, learning with it, through it, together with it. Um, 
uh, and also there is another deck so this is Oracle of Initiation by Melissa Lucia and there is also, I have received just at the end, basically at the end of the month, so I haven't even had a chance to play properly with it, that um, Santos and Signs Oracle. So um, I have done a little kind of flip through um, on Instagram, on my Instagram channel, but I'm going to do a proper review of this deck very soon. We actually have started the class on Santos and Signs with Melissa Lucia. You can still probably join in. Um, we only just uh, got some materials. The first live call is today, um, on Wednesday. Um, but I think Melissa will make these classes available later on for, you know, purchase and upload and like self-based work. So don't despair. Just check her, her website for it or her Etsy shop. And this is a very cool, crazy oracle with um, Santos, so different saints. She did uh, her, uh, you know, pictures at different cemeteries and signs from like Route 66 and all the graffiti signs. She loves graffiti and was taking those crazy, you know, signs. You read them very intuitively. This is a deck um, that, you know, it's kind of sparking your creative juices. You also have in this deck, which is amazing bags, you also have different words that you can use. And um, so it's a very kind of creative, different, twisted oracle. And um, so that's kind of coming, but it arrived in October. Um, Another thing that I really used a lot in October for readings was the Lightseer's Tarot. I love this deck, beautiful, just rollers back. Love this deck so much um, by Pixie Curio. I think it's up, it's out of print right now, but it's going to be reprinted uh, by Hay House. So coming 2020, you will be able to get this deck if you haven't gotten it through Kickstarter. And um, it's really such a great reader, this deck. It's beautiful. When you read for people nowadays, you know, they really can find themselves in this deck, in the images, and um, yeah, it's incredible. So, Lightseer Staro, I used a lot for readings. I also have been revisiting these two decks. So, one is... Um, the fifth element tarot, so that's the deck that has added another element to, to the um, four elements. And it's one of the first tarot decks that I received. This one is, was a gift from my husband. Not exactly the same deck because I swapped the other one, but um, this one I got from a swap. Um, yeah, it's a bit on the kind of new agey side of things, but it's still very soothing and very kind of nurturing. But if you're kind of allergic to totally new agey things, then you might be a little bit allergic to this one. And then one more deck that I was also playing with, but it's a very untypical deck. It's um, meant to be used for past life uh, readings. Uh, and it's by Red Orchid, Red Orchid Publishing by Melanie Osborne. And uh, she is really like, has created this unique gem. I have a review <coughs> of this deck and a sample reading on my channel. So if you're interested, take a look. Very soon I'm going to post interview with Melanie about this deck and creation of this deck. It has taken me a while. We have recorded this <coughs> interview a long time ago. But uh, yeah, finally the time <coughs> sorry, has come to speak more about this deck and show you also what um, prompt Melanie to create it. As you know, I have been traveling October. I went to London. I saw William Blake exhibition, which was amazing, very inspiring. Um, I have also visited, you know, Tate Modern and British Museum. I saw the skull. I saw like all the artifacts from, um, you know, Egypt and uh, Rosetta Stone and stuff like this. So it was really exciting. But October was one of those toughest months. I had to move my mom. I had barely time to work, really, um, so it was kind of quite intense. I think we are preparing, you know, the purging of Pluto and Saturn that's been going on for 2019 and cu culminates in 2020. Um, it's, you know, it's going to really make us look into stuff like this um, and keep healthy boundaries, restructure some stuff, 
move shit away, you know, release stuff that we're holding on to. Maybe also I realized how much I create my own story and attach the meaning to things that are not so important and turn, you know, this around, around in my head. And that's really draining of energy. So if you do it as well, like, you know, look into it, like stop, breathe, realize what you're doing and if it's necessary. Uh, when I was in England, I went to Watkins Books, you know, the old um, kind of esoteric shop and got myself those Dreams of Gaia Tarot Pocket Edition. I do have the large version too. So I'm going to do a video when I maybe compare the two um, editions. This one is borderless and it doesn't have the name on the cards, the names on the cards, but it's really sweet. It's a cool paper because it's flexible, bendy, but it's not laminated and um, yeah, it looks gorgeous. And I love the, you know, the small, uh, small size of it. Um, again, I know every day I show it's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, Raven Phelan, the Australian creatrix, it's all her original artwork. And it's this deck when and there was a lot of discussion when it came out first, is it the tarot or not? Because it has more major arcana, it has its own kind of system, but it's also elemental, so very easy to read. I slowly... I'm uh, kind of trying to get myself into the mood of um, maybe just connecting with the runes, but through the ways Lara Veleda Vesta or Ingrid Kincaid are teaching, so more experiential. I don't want to read books on them. I don't want to, um, like, they kind of from my own culture as well when we go deep down. And um, I just want to, you know, see how uh, how I can build any connection or relationship with it so with them so let's just see how it goes and this uh, beautiful deck is by Lunaria Gold and um, it's called Telluric Runes and she sells them on Etsy as well it's really beautiful and I also wanted to mention this deck that has arrived the Mystical Dream Tarot. I also posted a review of this deck or a walkthrough, my first impressions, um, by Edison Books. It is such a great deck. I'm, like, I'm playing with it every day. I really love it. It's very cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's something that has, you know, kind of bordered my October and November. But now I'm back. I'm open for business. If you uh, are interested in any readings with me, please check my website, www.tarotmap.com. I highly recommend, based on the feedback that I got from people, my life purpose readings. This is basically an astrology consultation plus a tarot oracle, um, tarot map style reading. There's also this beautiful creative tarot class that you can purchase for $15, support me, but also learn a lot of new creative ways to play with many different decks if you own more decks like myself. Uh, and uh, there's also a free Chiron class. Um, the class is uh, free on Taroton. So if you put the hashtag Taroton 2019 Chiron uh, Tarot Map, it will pop up. So you can take a look at this and then you can download um, uh, info, like free PDF of that class from my website. So you can check it out as well. Um, and yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the stuff that I was into and also really recommend Natalia's channel, which is amazing. And I'm going to do a few uh, VRs to her videos, but yeah, everything in the right time, slowly, slowly. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I speak to you soon, guys. Bye.